What's up, everybody? Welcome back to RacingNews.com. Welcome back to another one of our previews. All right, let's go to Keeneland. Saturday, October 19th, race nine on the card. It's the grade two Lexus Raven run stakes, seven furlongs, $350,000 a purse for the three-year-old Phillies. Field of 10 in this one. I'll put it up on the screen now for you. Um, it's probably not as good a race as the Perryville, to be honest with you. Perryville came up very good this year. But this is still a really good race, and I think we're going to have a lot of fun going through it. So let's do it right now. We'll go with number one, Fibber, to keep it or to start it off, I should say. Last time out, this horse was second, beating five links in the Dogwood Stakes. That was a grade three event. Horse looked pretty good. Got beat by my main squeeze, who unfortunately for Fibber is in this race. But um, the horse before that had won two in a row, including a stakes race at Ellis Park. And also won an allowance at Churchill Downs. So, I mean, this horse fits. And 10 to 1 is a, a juicy price on this horse. Um, since being claimed and, and uh, transferred to Chris Hartman, been pretty good. So, Fibber comes in here with a big shot in this one. The number two, two is Musia. Musia comes into this race after a third-place effort in the prior rest. Last time out at Saratoga. Got beat by Bright Work and Too Sharp. Those are good horses. Only got beat a length. Did get beat by nine and a half, though, two races back to Holland Ice, who's also in this race. But at six to one, it's another one that can show up and run pretty big. Maybe an underneath candidate for sure for the number two. Number three is my main squeeze. This is the horse that did win the Dogwood, like I mentioned last time out uh, at Churchill Downs just 28 days ago. One by five links and looked very good. Charlestown Oaks, two races back, was second. Went up and ran in the test and got third, beaten by Ways and Means and Emory. So... It's a horse that's been in tough races. This is not going to be, you know, over her head. That's for sure. Um, she can compete. There's no doubt about it. And, the, you know, the last time, well, the second to last time we saw her, I should say, in Kentucky, that was on Kentucky Oaks Day when she ran uh, first in the eight bell stakes. So this is a very good horse for sure. The number four is Twirling Queen. So we'll get back to the dirt after four straight races on the synthetic or the turf. Two wins on the synthetic, two wins on the turf. You know, last uh, three victories were stakes victories for this horse. I'm really not sure why we're here on the dirt again. Um, very puzzling to me because this horse obviously, <laughs> you know, one out of four on the dirt, four out of four on synthetic slash turf. So, uh, you know, look, I, I think, you know, she's in good form. That's the good news. But I just I don't think this is her best surface. So this was not one that had a lot of interest for me. But I do think she's a good horse. The number five is Emory. And this one makes a lot of sense. Uh, put together three straight wins to start the season, an allowance at Keeneland, a stakes victory at Churchill Downs in the Leslie's Lady Overnight, and then won the grade three victory ride up at Belmont at the Big A. Tried grade one company last time out on the test, got second, beaten two and a half, got beat by Ways and Means. Ways and Means would be two to five in this race. So I think Emory at seven to five makes sense. Um, definitely the one to beat. This horse has been very good in all those starts. And like I said, the test. It was a loss, but ran pretty darn good in there. And listen, beat my main squeeze by a couple of links. I think that's important coming into this one as well. The number six is VV's Dream. This is a horse that uh, tried to get on the Kentucky Oaks Trail uh, and was third in the Fairground Oaks two races back, fifth in the Rachel Alexandra three races back. So they gave it a shot. Couldn't quite do it. Was second last year uh, in the Darley Alcibiades. Got second, only beaten to Candied. So Horse has some class. Last time out, ran in a six-furlong allowance race off a little bit of a layoff at Churchill Downs. It was third, beaten two and two and a half. And not bad, not a bad race, but um, you know, not not a race that makes you think she can jump up and win this one. However, if you do think she's going to improve second off the layoff, she's definitely one you can play. I wouldn't be shocked. You kind of look at her workout patterns. She looks like she's rounding back into form. Um, I'm looking at her underneath in the spot. I hope she stays around that eight to one price or at least pays uh, decent in the bottom of a trifecta or even an exacta. I, I kind of like her in the spot to do that. The number seven is Minx Palace. Minx Palace coming off of an allowance win last time out at Churchill Downs. Tried Stakes Company two races back at Ellis. Did get beat by Fibber. Um, did win an allowance three races back. So uh, the one stakes race, that's not a great sign, but minus that, the horses hit the board. Uh, in all their her other races. So another one at 12 to 1 makes a lot of sense to me underneath. I think she'll come with a nice little run, kind of similar to what she did last time out in that allowance at Churchill Downs. The number eight is Uno Lee. Uno Lee coming off of a maiden special weight win at Churchill Downs last time out. 
That was just 22 days ago. That was off of an over 300 day layoff. Um, impressive, really impressive. Can we do it again? Uh, you know, tough race to face winners for the first time. And that's why she's 30 to one. And that's why I'm not overly anxious to play her in this spot. Number nine is Ripperton. Ripperton coming off of a second place effort behind Meeks Palace, the seven horse that we just talked about, and an allowance race at Churchill Downs. That was a really good effort. This horse was 20 to one in that race and was able to do that and finished ahead of Vivi's dream. Um, I think he's in with a bit of a chance. You know, last time out, we were a little bit like, I don't know, might be a little outclassed after running at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Um, but she ran well. She's in good form. Can she reproduce that type of effort in this tougher of, a, of an environment? That's my biggest question mark. I kind of lean towards no, but I wouldn't be completely shocked. And then finally, the number 10 is Hall and Ice. Hall and Ice was seventh last time out in the Charlestown Oaks, but did win two races back at Gulfstream by nine in the Azalea Stakes and looked pretty good doing it. Um, at her best, this is, a, this is a nice horse. This is a horse that's tough to beat. But uh, the Charlestown Oaks does kind of have me worried a little bit. Is she good enough overall? Um, I'm not sure. To me, I kind of view her like the seven, like the six maybe a little bit more of an underneath play than actually winning the race. So it's kind of how I take a look at her. All right, time to pick a winner, and I'm going to keep it simple in this one. I may, I am going to go with the favorite. I'm going to go number five, Emery, to win this race. The three races she won, all three of them, if she can repeat those efforts, I think you're going to be good enough to win here. And even if she can repeat the test last time out where she lost, uh, I still think that was kind of a winning effort. Just ways and means is really good. So I think the number five, Emory is the one to beat this year in the Raven run. So I'm going to go to number five, Emory on top. All right, guys, that'll do it for a preview of the Raven run six live from Keeneland, Saturday, October 19th, race nine on the card. Should be a fun day of betting. Hit that like button. If you like the video, hit subscribe. You really like it. Want to get alerted anytime we do videos like this. And most importantly, good luck if you're betting Keeneland on Saturday.